In this video, we're going to explore computational science, a new type of science made possible by computers, and the impact it's having on our everyday lives. Computational science can be seen as the third leg of science in addition to theoretical and experimental science. It lies at the intersection of computer science, mathematics, and science. Computational science uses mathematics and computer science to model real-world problems and conduct simulation experiments. Computational science is made possible by the advent of powerful computers. Increases in computational power have enabled us to design and conduct experiments on models of systems that are too big, too expensive, or too dangerous to experiment with in the real world. Increased computational power allows us to run multiple what-if scenarios very quickly. We also collect and analyze large amounts of data produced by these models. But it is important to note that computational science does not replace traditional field experimentation. Each approach is appropriate in different situations. Computational science opens up new opportunities for problem solving and empowering students as scientists. We use the computational science cycle to describe the process used by computational scientists. We start by selecting a real world problem or phenomenon we're interested in studying. Then we need to make a simplified version of the real world. Doing so produces an abstraction for a model. Next, we go from the abstract idea for a model to a computational model by representing the components and behaviors in terms of formal mathematics and algorithms. The next step is to translate the algorithms into a computer code. These four steps are called computer modeling. Finally, we run simulations using the computer model we created as an experimental test bed. Simulations run time forward as if we could speed up time to see how the future unfolds. During the simulation, we can produce and capture data. From these data, we draw conclusions and interpret if our model has any basis in reality. If the model reproduces some features of reality that we care about as compared to the real world data, perhaps it can be used to help us understand or make predictions about the real world. Scientists and researchers use computer models to study a wide variety of phenomena. Let's hear from Melanie Moses. Melanie is a computer scientist and biologist. She uses computer simulations of ant colonies to study and design computer networks. A professor in the Department of Computer Science here at UNM, and um, I also have an appointment in the Department of Biology. And I'm going to tell you about some research that we've been doing in my lab over the last couple of years um, using agent-based models, very much like the kinds of agent-based models that you all are learning to build. Um, and we've used those models to study uh, complex systems. And the systems we focus on are ant colonies and computer systems. And we learn a lot about um, each system by studying the other. So in our models, foragers are searching for food on a grid. And upon finding this food, they decide whether or not to return to where they went using site fidelity or to communicate using pheromones. And we use a technique called genetic algorithms to evolve the parameters of the model. So these, um, in other words, there are many different ways that the ants could behave, many different ways they could move, many different ways they could balance memory and communication. And our goal was to find the way that maximized the rate that seeds were collected in a fixed period of time. Okay, so we learned a great deal about <clears throat> what we think the ants in the field are doing and what good strategies for foraging collectively are. So we then wanted to take those strategies and do something with them. This was going to be sort of our final test about whether those strategies really worked. And so what we did is we took those strategies and we programmed them, um, we used them as the programs that govern swarms of robots. So we built these robots in our labs. These are robots um, controlled by iPhones. So there's an iPhone up here and a pretty simple motor and a few sensors. And these robots then we send them out collectively, we have a group of six of them, and we send them out to forage using the behaviors that the ants have told us are good foraging behaviors. What I told you about is, um, you know, kind of my belief that these computational and biological systems are both these kind of com complex systems where you have interacting agents that are hooked together by networks of communication. And um, we can use computer science, we can use models to reveal how biology, uh, biological complex systems work. And on the other hand, we can go to biology and we can ask how do uh, distributed strategies work? In particular, these ants 
taught us that um, you can have a scalable distributed search mechanism by balancing individual memory uh, with pheromone communication. And we were able to take that and put that into swarm robotics. So this is a, a case where we have mobile computers moving around, interacting with each other, that can now imitate the way that ants um, communicate with each other to achieve some task. And I think this sort of approach um, is important because as computer science, um, as, as computers become more and more internetworked, their interactions with humans, with each other, with the physical world, all um, introduce this new layer of complexity. Um, and I think that biology has evolved many interesting solutions to these, these sorts of complex um, challenges. And um, so I'm, I'm hopeful that we actually will learn a great deal more about how to build computer systems by studying biological systems. As we have seen, computational science is a new branch of science that integrates computational thinking and computing into the sciences. Scientists are using computer modeling and simulation to understand, predict, and prevent the daunting problems we face, such as climate change, loss of biodiversity, energy consumption, and epidemics.